All right. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Um, so this session is about bringing visibility into your OpenSAC network. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Valentina Laria, and I work for PlumGrid. Uh, PlumGrid has an SDN solution for OpenSAC. Our booth is right there, so if you have more questions on what we do, we're welcome to you know, stop by later. So today I want to concentrate um, primarily on the challenge of operationalizing the networking layer in OpenSAC. And you know, the one thing I want to start from is you know, some of the transformation changes that we see from an infrastructure perspective and how they're impacting the operational side of the house. So obviously, you, know, you all see um, adoption of new technology, and cloud being you know, the driver of this transformation. But you know, all these new products and components that come into the picture obviously bring some complexity, especially from an operational perspective. So the first complexity that we're dealing with is that we're now um, you know, operating a large scale environment where there is a very large number of components. So what we call you know, usually a distributed system. And operating a distributed system has some inherent learning and understanding of you know, the different pieces of the puzzle that are needed to be able to actually go in there and operationalize it from a complete life cycle perspective. Uh, the other aspect of this is that you know, the operational team, the first line of defense, is not necessarily always um, super familiar with you know, OpenSAC and SDN and all the you know, different pieces of the puzzle that come together. So how do we you know, help this group become effective um, you know, from day zero of deploying a cloud, especially from, from a networking perspective? And you know, at the network level, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but there's a big transformation, obviously, of delivering networking services from the you know, physical model we're used with, with you know, to more of a software-driven model. But you know, it's not that the physical network just goes away, right? You still have your physical switches and physical routers that need to be operated, and you need to make sure that that traffic is actually flowing through these devices. So now we're left with a physical infrastructure and a virtual infrastructure, and often you lack tools that are helping you correlate these two layers back and forth. So what we're looking at is you know, really a model where you have this physical environment underneath, and that's your you know, traditional data center infrastructure, what you use with. And you know, on top of that, you have your virtual layer. And uh, you know, the top level is what is driven by OpenSAC, Neutron, for example. And your physical infrastructure is what is traditionally driven by you know, is, you know, CLI configuration. Those are your physical routers and physical switches. Now, while the operational team, especially in the network operation center, it's very much used to operate the bottom layer, the, the challenge that we're seeing, you know, and I spend a lot of time working with my customers, helping them you know, operationalize the solutions that we bring to them, is how to take what they know about the physical layer and translate it up into this virtual layer. Now, what is different is obviously that while on the bottom you have individual components you can log into and you know, troubleshoot and you know, log into ports and figure out if the traffic is flowing back and forth, at the top you have something that it's more of a concept, an abstraction. Right? You have a logical router. You have a logical switch. But those devices don't actually live physically in one spot. They can live distributed across maybe tens of components or hundreds of components. So you immediately see how it's quite different to go and operate a single device at the bottom versus a much larger number of devices at the top. So on top of this, the other piece of the puzzle is um, very often in OpenSAC, to achieve this virtual network infrastructure construct, we leverage the concept of overlay networks. And when you have an overlay network, what happens is that you do a couple of two things. The first one is that you insert a software component inside each compute node. So these are your you know, Nova OpenSAC compute nodes. You usually insert a piece of software that runs inside all, all of these compute nodes. And you know, in terms of the PlumGrid solution, we are an overlay solution. And we do insert a piece of software inside each of these servers. And this component for us is a kernel component. It's a component that we refer to as the IO visor. And this IO visor piece is what runs all your networking functions. So your switching, your routing, your NATing, your security policies, and so on and so forth. And then you have the ability to create VXLAN tunnels that will help you kind of decouple your virtual environment from your physical environment. So you see there's you know, a couple of things that happen here. The first one is that your virtual network starts being fully distributed. You have this VXLAN infrastructure that starts decoupling your virtual layer from your physical layer. And these entities, these networking entities, these security entities, um, 
while you have an abstraction of a single one of those, start living you know, the, across the entire environment. So, you know, Plum Grid has been in the SDN um, business for, for a number of years, and, you know, we work with a variety of customers that have asked us to help them and operationalize this level, this, this, you know, level of the stack, this piece of the puzzle. And, you know, we started looking at the existing tools out there. And a lot of what is out there in the market, especially around SDN, tends to be very tabular heavy. You have all these, you know, rows of, you know, information about your infrastructure, um, and so you probably have a lot of data there, but it's not necessarily easy for you as a user, especially if you're an operator and someone that is not necessarily a PhD in OpenStack and a PhD in SDN and a PhD in distributed system to go figure out what is actually happening in there. Again, the information might be all there, but it's not necessarily something that it's easily consumable by the user. So we wanted to take a pretty revolutionary approach to the problem of monitoring and visualization. And you know, we wanted to combine that with the fact that we have this um, kernel component that runs inside each compute node. So we have visibility into the entire OpenStack environment. And we wanted to build something that could be very intuitive and easy to consume for anyone from an operational perspective. And, and so together with our SDN solution, we introduced this new product recently that is called PlumGrid Cloud Apex. And I'm going to show you a demo uh, in just a sec. But the idea of Cloud Apex is to build a cloud visualization platform that helps bring you know, understanding of the health and condition of the overall distributed system. We wanted to make it very simple. So the goal for us was to achieve zero day operations. So to really enable the operational team to jump in there and be proficient from the get-go. Um, again, based on my experience, I spent a lot of time with the cloud engineering groups at all of our customer sites. And they all tell me, you know, help me get the operation guys involved, because I want to be able to be out of the loop. I don't want them to you know, call me every time there's a problem. How do we enable them to be proficient? So this is really the goal for, for Cloud Apex for us, was to enable these zero-day operations Make, you know, build something that would be very intuitive, very simple to consume, something that anyone could just you know, jump in there and figure out exactly what is happening. The other big piece of the puzzle for us was that, again, there are all these layers that come together. You have your physical infrastructure. You have your virtual infrastructure on top. And you know, sometimes the, the problem you're troubleshooting can be as simple as, oh, my two VMs cannot ping. right? But even that very simple troubleshooting problem involves traversing all the layers of the stack and touching both the compute layer and the networking layer, right? So my two VMs cannot ping. Well, first of all, let's figure out how those two VMs are connected from a virtual infrastructure perspective. Are they part of the same tenant? Are they part of two separate tenants? Are they interconnected through maybe a shared provider network that has been created on top of that? Now let's look at the physical infrastructure. Are those two VMs sitting on the same physical server? Are those two VMs sitting on two servers in the same physical rack? Are those two VMs sitting on two servers across two separate racks? So you immediately see that the you know, possibilities and combinations are endless. So we wanted to provide a, a way for someone to jump into this Cloud Apex visualization platform and be able to immediately find where components are, correlate across the different layers of the stack, and get a feel for the health of the environment. Uh, the other thing that is obviously important here is that, um, as you know, right, we are a community. That's why we're here at this summit. right? And there is a lot of moving parts that build a solution for, for a customer, for an environment. So what we wanted to do from the get-go was to build an environment that would be extensible so that we can bring in not just the Plum Grid SDN components, but start pulling some of the OpenStack logs, for example, as well as some of the physical infrastructure that are relevant for, for this environment. OK? Um, and last but not least is, kind of the, is the central point that I have there, which is what we wanted to build was something where it would be very easy to just log into the UI and pinpoint a problem. Again, instead of having to kind of process all these you know, heavy text-based um, kind of, you know, usual interface that you usually deal with, have something that would be very intuitive and easy to consume. So I'm going to show you all of this in the demo. Um, but a couple of, of areas that are, you know, important here that I wanted to just, um, you know, highlight before I, I get into the environment are the functionality that we call affinity-based GUI. And that this is what you see um, listed here at the top. 
And the affinity based GUI is the ability to select any resource, whether it's on the virtual or the physical layer, and to see how it correlates with the other layer of the stack. So you have this ability to click on a virtual entity and see how it maps to the physical, and vice versa from the physical to the virtual. We also have the ability to turn on all sort of uh, real-time heat maps. So I'll show you all of that in action. So based on the identity and the type of the VM, whether it's, you know, it's a web VM or a database VM, based on the identity of a physical server, you can look at metrics and have this real-time uh, display functionality help you navigate the environment. As you can see, it's quite unique in terms of design. You don't see a lot of text there. Um, but you have all your resources that are re represented in a very compact way, something that could be running kind of on your NOC center, on your operation center. And you can just jump in there and see if there's any red blinking light. Probably something is not quite right, right? Uh, so uh, I'll show you a demo. Um, just to give an idea of the environment, we have um, what we call the Plum Grid Cloud Apex middleware, which is um, you know, a certain number of components that are collecting all these distributed logs that come from what runs inside each of your servers, each of your compute nodes. Um, it's pulling from all the Plum Grid components. Um, so again, it's collecting the traffic as VMs flow through the network, the virtual network infrastructure, it's collecting all sort of traffic. The middleware is aggregating this information in real time, and it's presenting that through the Cloud Apex UI. Obviously, all these things can be exposed through API as well. So let me quickly jump here. And all right, so we're logging into Cloud Apex here, and this is what we call the resource view. Um, so at the very top of the screen, you have all your virtual resources. In this example, those are the virtual machines and the projects, what we call virtual domains. And at the bottom, you have your servers, and the servers are organized by rack. We run LODP so we know how the servers are connected into the environment. You can see it's very simple to have a global view of the environment. And you can get detailed information about each of these elements by, by mousing over that. Or I'll show you how you can actually search for any type of string in this environment. So you have your entire distributed system. This can be hundreds of servers. And you can very easily find resources anywhere in the environment. On the right, we have what we call the detail panel. And the detail panel, it's context sensitive. So whatever you select on the left, whether it's the overall deployment or an element, uh, let me just sorry, pause here for a sec so I can explain you a couple more things. So whatever you select on the left, whether it's the overall deployment or an entity, will show you detailed information on the right. So it's going to show you, you know, how many, for example, for a physical server, how many virtual machines are there. Um, for a project, for a virtual domain, it's going to show you again how many virtual machines are there, how many virtual domains are deployed in the overall environment. So it's going to help you kind of navigate uh, information for the entire system. And then at the bottom, you have your um, detailed real-time logs. Uh, these logs tell you if something is happening in the system. So if there is, for example, interfaces that are going up and down, if there are crashes at key components in the environment, um, it's going to help you with you know, uh, monitoring all of that. So you can see here, for example, showing me the list of all the virtual domains, all the projects that I have in that environment. It's going to also show me you know, kind of all the uh, virtual machines there. So uh, now what we're going to start doing is we're going to start clicking around. And uh, we're going to start looking at the affinity-based functionality. So you can see here that I'm selecting an entity, for example, a physical entity at the bottom. And you can see that this maps to the top to a number of virtual entities. So here I have, for example, a server, right? And this server has six virtual machines that are deployed on it. Now, what this is going to help me figure out very simply is how are these virtual machines mapped to tenant environments? And you can see that in this example, they're pretty equally spread across multiple tenants. There's two that belong to the same tenant, but for the rest, they're kind of equally spread. So you can immediately see if there is a hotspot, you know, a misconfiguration in terms of you know, deploying VMs. Also, if there is a problem that it's affecting a cluster of entities, whether it's, again, VMs or server, this can help you very easily spot it. You can do the same from the top. So you can actually select a virtual resource and see how it maps to a physical environment. And you can do that for a tenant as well. So in this example here, I'm selecting a whole tenant. And I'm going to see how it maps to my physical infrastructure. Again, very powerful to figure out how the two levels are correlated together. 
right? So, uh, you know, you can see that, you know, this tenant, it's again pretty equally distributed. And for this tenant, uh, on the right side, you can see all the VMs that are there. You can see the servers it's mapped into. You can also see kind of aggregated information about the virtual domain itself, about the project itself, and all the logs that are present in the system. All right? In this example, there were some you know, interfaces up and down events. There were some you know, excessive CPUs that were uh, related to this environment. And you can see you can filter logs. Uh, you can also alter logs by severity. So you can look at just the you know, critical alerts, the warnings. This is also displayed at the very top of the screen there. Um, and for us, from you know, an SDN solution, we have the concept of this control plane and management plane elements that we call the directors. And those are very critical because they're the brain of the system. And so we show them at the very top as well, so we can have a quick glance of uh, you know, the health of, of those elements there. Now, what I, I'm going to show you next is how do we turn on heat maps on top of this resource view that I was showing you earlier. So what we have here is the ability to look at different metrics in the environment, things like packets sent and receive, uh, bytes sent and receive, CPU utilization, memory utilization. And I have some graphs on the right side that are helping me look at the normal trend of the environment and are helping me set thresholds properly. So once I've learned what the normal behavior is, I can start setting thresholds. These thresholds can be set at the VM level, they can be set at the physical server level, or at the project level. So if an entire tenant is affected, I can see that problem easily. And you can see that as you set these metrics, right? you can set whatever thresholds for, you know, for your environment. We also have the ability to customize these metrics based on the um, type of workload. Again, I was saying earlier the example of a DB VM versus a web VM. You probably want to set a very different type of threshold for these two categories. right? So you have the ability to do that. And, uh, and as I said, you can look at virtual machines metrics, project metrics, physical server metrics. You can also order them by severity. So again, the goal for this was really to make simple and easy for a cloud operator to jump in there and see, oh, oh there's a problem. That one VM up there, you know, I can get all the information. I can see how it maps to my physical infrastructure is experiencing some, you know, some misconfiguration. Now, obviously, if you have a large environment, you want to be able to quickly find something. So you can see here, I'm just searching based on a random um, pattern. I'm looking for a VM name. I can look for an IP address. I can look for a MAC address. I can look for any type of information. And it's going to start filtering things dynamically for me so that I can you know, just quickly find anything in there that it's relevant for, for what I'm doing. And you, know, you can see that, obviously, I can do that for, for physical information. So I can look for IP addresses of you know, my servers and VMs and all of that. Um, so this environment was relatively small. The one I, was, you know, I had recorded is DemoVed. It had you know, a handful of virtual domains and a handful of you know, servers and virtual machines. But this is to give an idea of how this can scale with a much larger environment. Um, so here I have you know, much larger number of VMs, much larger number of projects. And it's still pretty simple to find you know, if there is a problem there. As I said, you can kind of turn on these metrics for the entire project environment and you know, easily spot if there is a problem and a correlation between the two layers. Um, so this is what I wanted to cover today. I know I have about a minute left. Uh, so if there is any question or comment that anyone wants to make, Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope it was helpful. <laughs>